Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Alicia. I am an LPN student at the moment. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. If you are returning, then welcome back. Today I wanted to go over just some tips that I have found for clinicals whenever you start those, if you haven't already. Um, so I think I have about four to go over with you. And I know that clinicals are a mixture of emotions. They are exciting, they're terrifying. There's just, clinicals are a lot. You know, you learn some stuff and now you're gonna start doing things and it's just, it's a lot. Um, for some people, they just click really well with clinicals and some people, they just, they're a little scared of them. And I understand both. So I just want to go in with some tips so that hopefully you can get the most out of your clinicals. And the first one I'm going to start with is ask questions. You are a student. They know that you are a student. You are there to ask all of the questions. You're there to show off what you know, sure. But this is the time to get things wrong and clarify things that you are unsure about. So if you're doing something and you kind of just have this like, you know, I'm not 100% sure, like I'm maybe 60% sure, ask. Ask your instructor if that's more comfortable for you. Ask the nurse if you have a nice one, even if you don't actually ask them anyway. Like they, they know that they're getting a student. They know that they're working in a hospital that takes students. They should be able to answer your questions and it might actually help you learn how to deal with some difficult people. Um, whatever, regardless, I digress. Ask questions, ask all of the questions. Um, sometimes I can kind of get away with doing a quick Google search, uh, but you'll find that there are a lot of situations that are different in the actual practice that might oppose things that you find. I'll leave it at that. Um, experience in this situation is the thing. You want to ask someone who has the experience with these situations. The next thing I have is follow your nurse. Um, you know, you're in clinicals, your instructors want you to do paperwork, you have all these assignments to do. I understand all of that, but maybe you get to a point where you're really confident with your paperwork. Find your nurse that morning and just follow them. You know, they're gonna sit down and chart Hopefully, if it's a good day, they will sit down and chart. Even if not, you may pick a patient who doesn't actually have a whole lot going on. Whenever they go into that room, you do your paperwork, that sort of situation. But follow them, like go into the room, see what all what they do, how they interact with each of their patients, how they handle the workload that they have. I think it's extremely beneficial to see an actual process of a day for a nurse as a student. So you're not just specifically tagging along for things with the patient that you are given or patients, depending on what your instructors decide. Um, you're kind of going beyond that and seeing how that nurse manages time. Um, all of the things that nurses are actually doing because we learn stuff, right? But then whenever you go into practice, there's additional situations that come up and they take care of those. You will have to take care of those. So it's cool to see those things. Also, if you do that, then you kind of show some initiative with your nurse and they may be more likely to allow you to do things. Um, like they'll come and find you. They'll say, hey, we gotta go do this in this room. And it's not a promise that they will, but if they see that you are actively just like, I want to see anything and everything that I possibly can in clinicals, then the majority of the time they will help you achieve that. Whereas if you're someone who just shows up around med time for your specific patient, then they're probably going to be less likely to come and find you. You may also find someone that you really like and do your preceptorship. Who knows? But follow them around. Be their shadow. You can make jokes about it. I make jokes about it. I tell them that I'm gonna be their shadow. You know, I'm gonna be a real creep and I'm gonna follow you today. Hope that's cool with you. Um, that's what I want to do. I wanna see all of the things and I want to learn all of the things and that is how you do it. So 
There's that one. Follow them around. My next one is forget the word no. If there's something that's like, uh, you want to go start this IV, maybe it's not specifically your patient for that day, but don't say no to that. I mean, if you've got classmates and you know that that patient is a classmate's patient, then maybe you don't take their thunder. Um, but if it's not, if that patient is, you know, without a student that day, start that IV. Go and do it. Do absolutely everything that you possibly can while you're in clinicals. I would suggest that you don't step on toes because whenever you start stepping on toes and your toes get stepped on, it's not a great time for anyone. But, you know, if you're not going to step on any toes and the option is available to you, then do it. Absolutely do it. And then my last one is do the things that you're scared of. It kind of goes along with the don't say no, but I have seen hesitation whenever it comes to things in clinicals. I know that we can't find everything that we want to do in clinicals. Um, you know, if you do, then you received a golden ticket, but there are some skills that some people are a little more weary about. Like I have yet to start a catheter. I have yet to place one and it kind of scares me a little bit because the sterile technique and as you're inserting a tube inside of someone's body, you know, you can go too far, you can not go far enough. And it's an important thing that's being done because you have to avoid, everyone has to avoid. So like, what if I mess that up? Like that's terrifying for me. Now, if the situation presents itself in clinicals where I can start a catheter, I am 100% gonna jump on that, even though it absolutely terrifies me because when else am I gonna do it? You know, am I gonna be a real big nurse and someone comes in and says, hey, your patient needs a catheter, right? Am I gonna go in there and let that be my first time, even though I had the opportunity to do it as a student? No, heck no, heck no. I'd rather start one as a student for everything. I wanna do one of every single skill as a student, because that is the time that we're learning. That is the time that we have guidance. That is the time we can ask questions. And I'm not saying that as a nurse, you can't ask questions. You know, whenever you're a brand new baby nurse, they're going to expect that you don't quite know everything. But it's just, in my opinion, much better to have experienced these things first. That's pretty much it. Just do the things that scare you and look for them. Look for the things that scare you. You know, like a lot of people are scared of IVs, sticking needles inside of people's bodies and I understand that like I was terrified of it too but I went and got a job as a phlebotomist to get over it and I did it helped immensely so now I'm not really scared of needles but there are some people that are and I know that there are some people who would gladly pass one off just because they're a little spooked by it and not everyone has great veins heck not a lot of people have great veins at all especially whenever you get on like a med surge unit where everyone's a little bit older generally your patient population is on the older end um their veins may not be very good at all you know but they need that iv and it's kind of one of those situations of try it absolutely try it but if you can't get it then you may want to get someone else because sticking someone like eight times is just that's just mean, especially whenever you can pass it off to someone who might have better luck. And it doesn't mean they're better than you. It doesn't mean you're not good at it. It just means that person's difficult and you were not meant to stick them, you know? So that's, that's it. Just find the things that you're scared of and do several of them until you're not scared of it anymore. Clinicals are wild. Um, I understand they can be a little intimidating, but, you know, they're only as beneficial as you make them. So you've got to get out there and take the opportunities, find the opportunities, do all of the things, be stupid, be the dumb one, ask all of the questions, because that is the opportunity to do so. And if you don't take it, you know, then you're just kind of taking that away from yourself. So clinicals are awesome. I have a great time. I, I think there have been a couple of times where it's, you don't really want to go because you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning. But I still always have a pretty good time at clinicals. It does help that, you know, 
I like the people that are there. I don't know how everyone else's program is, but my kids are pretty cool. So I say kids, I'm probably the youngest of the group, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope some of those helped. Uh, if they did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you feel the need to do so. I would appreciate each and all of them. And I just, I hope you guys have a good time. I hope you get the most out of your clinicals. And if you have any specific questions, then leave a comment and I will answer them the best that I can. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and send me a DM and I will chat with you about it. Um, you know, everything's going to be based off of my program because that's the one I have experienced. It's going to be based off of my own personal experiences. So just keep that in mind whenever I respond or give an answer. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope everyone has a great time and learns lots. Learns lots. Learns a lot. Learn lots. However you say it. I hope you enjoy your clinicals. I hope that they are extremely beneficial and just get the most out of them that you can. All right, thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.